Hi together. Welcome to today's webinar as usually hosted by the Open Telecom Cloud Community Portal. Today we have a guest, it's Hector in the call. Hector is the product manager from the AOM service here, the Application Operations Management Service. And he will give us in a few minutes an overview about the service, what, he, what the service is capable of, etc. and also a cool live demo. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, to have the chance now to um, show you something about AOM, right? So from the both of you, they, uh, you should know I am uh, here here from the product management part, so um, more focus for customer facing. But it's not just uh, me. Uh, we are the AOM belongs to this orchestration squad, and in this orchestration squad, we have many other services like uh, lock tank services, CS, and so on. And uh, I'm working together uh, from the technical part. It is uh, Rafael, he's supporting me all the time. So we just uh, are deciding and um, working together and see how we can uh, get things done from the services of the Open Telecom Cloud. So I'm now since uh, two and a half years. And this is uh, now today only use the focus for one services. Uh, this is the AOM. And hopefully you know that this AOM, it's only used a service for monitoring. For that part, I will then start with a short introduction. Even uh, for you, if uh, you are not uh, aware about all the functionalities that AOM can offer to you, what are the objectives and uh, of course, uh, what is good for. Um, we know that uh, it is also a monitoring tool. So the uh, first question is if we have uh, Cloud Eye, then uh, why this AOM will be make some sense for you. So the CS, it is uh, used at the level of the infrastructure as a service. So it just monitor VMs, uh, not more. So that means uh, whatever you have deployed uh, an applications, uh, most of the case, um, this application needs to be uh, somehow uh, monitoring also the logs and so on. Uh, then this is uh, the reason AOM has uh, been come in this uh, part of the OTC. But it is not just like you can um, only monitor ECS, you can also monitor uh, CCE, I mean uh, this Kubernetes solution from the Open Telecom Cloud. And with that then will be exactly the part that you can um, access and uh, get the same uh, metrics that you get from CCE. And it is a central part that you can also get uh, metrics from your uh, existing ECS that they are not belongs to Kubernetes. Okay, that means uh, what is this good for? It's only just monitoring or uh, those, uh, this applications operation management uh, can help a lot in other points. So that means in this case, um, the, uh, this service also um, have some alarms. So the same as uh, you know, uh, for example, on CCA that you can uh, set if something uh, exceeds uh, some kind of thresholds, then you can set it also on AOM. Uh, as I previously told you, it is also for monitoring solutions. So you can also monitor just uh, CCA consumptions from the CPU memory and uh, for uh, the part of events. So it means if uh, something change, I mean events, it's uh, like a create or stop, uh, a note on your CCE and uh, or an agent, then you will get also this information on the e event level. Uh, to get all that uh, that working, it is uh, like uh, it's the magic here for ECS. It will be uh, based on an uh, agent, as you know, and most of the other automation tools uh, to get something deployed or uh, get some information about all the. ECS or applications that are connected, they will need always some kind of process. This process, it is inside an agent, and this agent is interconnected to AOM only used to forward exactly the information needed and required only used to get displayed on AOM. So you have to be more focused without uh, this IC agent, you will not able to get metrics, whatever service do you have or application on the other side. Based on that fact, so what is uh, uh, different from the monitoring that you provide, uh, you get from CCE and AOM? Uh, yeah, there are actually too many, too big difference that make uh, uh, some sense for you to be uh, use uh, 
AOM are not CCE. But the first one, it is if CCE is more focused to monitor nodes. So that means where Kubernetes is running, so no more else. So if you have a ECS and so on, it's not possible because CCE is just for Kubernetes, it's a dedicated service. Um, the second one, it's uh, for the audit. It is more and more, more important because uh, too many companies are really focused uh, to uh, get a trace or to get a monitoring at least uh, for a certain time or um, deployments. And unfortunately, on CCE, it's a little bit limited. Uh, limited. And in this case, it is like uh, for deployment, you can only just see in the past the last 12 hours. That uh, for some application, it's uh, probably if we want to see uh, what happened yesterday, last week, will be impossible, will be not. And from the other side, also in uh, CCE, you can get uh, access to the logs on the use, and the maximal value is 30 days. So for these 30 days, that means uh, most enterprises and companies that they are really working on production and they have some kind of audit. And the audit is uh, one of the reasons that they say uh, 30 days is uh, not that enough. I will have, uh, I would like to have the logs for the last year, for example. And in this case, with CCE, it will be not possible. So uh, it is, uh, it is fixed. It can be changed, and it is used uh, like that. With AOM, you have also these uh, three uh, things solved. So that means uh, you can also save the logs on the OBS, and the OBS then you can save everything for a long, long, long time, and then just uh, have all in one place. Of course, this OBS uh, solution, I will show you during the demo, what are the limitations of these OBS because everything has also limitations, but it's not that huge limitation. It's just to be more focused on how you can develop this solution on your own system. So in this case, also with the three tools and uh, SM uh, notifications uh, by using uh, this SMN, it's also integrated with AOM. That is a very good value. So actually, you may have this. Um, now, okay, uh, I give you some uh, few introduction about this application monitoring. In the um, uh, live demo, then you will be more in touch. You could be also get more, uh, be aware of what is the solution is good for. And, and then I, I just prepare for a day, for example, for the agent, agent installation on a CCE, ACS, then we will spend 10 minutes. Uh, then to install and install the agent. So uh, how to show you where to you can uh, use uh, get that to uninstall. What are exactly uh, the default values for that and so on. And from the other part is uh, we will also uh, after we deploy this ECS we will deploy their an um, application, and then we will set this application to AOM so that the uh, uh, log pad I mean the logs can be start uh, being synchronized with AOM and we will see. Uh, how this uh, happened. With troubleshooting, it means only use the search engine that uh, this uh, log search on the AOM it's uh, working. So if you are looking for a specific uh, words on the during these logs, then you will be able also to do a search on it and uh, design your own alarms. So in this case, uh, about for example CPU usage, disk usage, and so on. And uh, for the metrics part, will be more like you will be then in touch how to design your own uh, dashboards in these dashboards you can ex 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 specifically decide which containers which uh, deployments do you want to get the metrics displayed and the, the last part will be of, uh, some words about billing and uh, the limitation of these aom products so i think uh, then after we uh, know the agenda only just Few words about the installation so that you will not uh, just uh, saying that I am do, I'm executing code and this and that, and, but you are not aware what I'm really doing. So uh, we will move exactly to the AOM service, and then on that we we will uh, set uh, uh, find out where is the place and you get these instructions. With this instruction, it means uh, you will get exactly a how to do this. Uh, and after that, we will see that the uh, agent is running and this is it. So there are also there the explanations, of course, on this uh, on Oropetical Cloud. And then in this case, uh, you will see what you need. So in this case, as you know, uh, the execution, it will be only just one command line. Uh, but uh, what you need before you start just executing this command line will be access to this uh, server 
So somehow you have a, you need a console there for accessing. The other thing is uh, also the access key, secret key, and root permissions. Uh, when you have all of this, then it's like uh, you start and then uh, moving and do it. But the question is always, if I'm doing the execution, uh, just as I showed you before uh, the uh, the previous slide, so what would be happen? So after uh, this, you may see that uh, their installation of this IC agent will be create a, di a directory structure like this. So that means if you want to know in your ECS as a, an admin where all that stuff is installed, then uh, you know opt, opt, opt and then OS is. And in this place, then all this stuff will be then installed. It is really important because, you know, for our administrators, they always want to keep an eye what is going on in my systems, where I can find it, and of course, how I can destroy it. I mean, they installed, not destroyed. Um, yeah, now, uh, of course, after that, uh, the uh, this uh, command line not just not install the agent, it's also uh, start the agent. So after we do uh, this uh, execution, then we will get to these two services. With these two services, then it is uh, more over for this uh, agent that it's also with the full pet also described there. Okay, then and now let's start the demo. I think uh, then we are ready. At least you know what I will start doing. And then during this, uh, hopefully it will be more clear for you uh, how it's supposed to work. Let's move now to the OTC. Then we have here, there we are logged in and then we have ECS there. Then with the first step, we will, uh, we will have to create an ECS. For uh, this case, as I already create uh, an image. In this image, I have set uh, mostly of the uh, work. So uh, we need to do, I uh, decide to have, I think it was CentOS with no agent there installed. Um, so you have to set also a, network because it is really important and of course i have to access that server as i told you before for the connections that will be exactly the case and the last step um, let's set a demo for example then select a key and then just let's start we do the confirmation we just only use uh, check that the value of uh, the machine it's exactly correctly set the image and then let's start after this then uh, what we are doing right now it is use the uh, usual deployment of uh, um, ECS in the most of the case outside and the companies they already have exactly the same procedure so they have a standard uh, image that they are using in this image everything has been there updated deployed whatever so it's part moreover of the or of a CDCI a chain, so you may always deploy the latest version with the latest updates and so on, and then that will be exactly the main intention of this. Um, during um, uh, during this way, uh, you will see that we are now uh, uh, have to wait a little bit. I think it is uh, more than the two minutes, and then we can then access uh, this ECS. The AOM that we will access, it is a here place in this place. So we move to there and we will only just see that uh, everything is working. Of course, then I am here in this AOM that is placed on this um, project, UDE. But uh, we have uh, two things that we should just know. Uh, you can deploy TCE everywhere. So in every each, uh, new project, for example, like this, and then in this case, uh, in every project that you have, you will have a, a, a AOM running. In this case, I already have deployed a CCE. So actually there are two, um, two uh, uh, Kubernetes. In this case, with these two Kubernetes, we will move only just to uh, check what I have deployed. So we will see that we have also uh, now a production uh, we will have also a development and then they are still there um, running. The most important thing we can see also on the deployment level that we have already containers running and start doing something. So that is the very good news. And uh, also uh, we have uh, now at uh, this case uh, two important things to know just before we go. 
Uh, I told you before that in GCE we have some kind of metrics monitoring solution integrated. So in this case, for example, if you want to know all about this, then you just select this monitoring, and then you will see uh, just a briefly introduction of how this is supposed to work. So I think that this is not rocket science. It's already know for every one of you. Um, and it is also displayed here uh, from workloads and pods only the one just tiny thing that you have to know it is always the top five so if you have more than five deployments you will see only you always use five of them uh, the other thing only just to get the monitoring of this way if you move to the uh, uh, pods for example you can also access a H pod and then on the monitoring you can see access them how the uh, resource are just uh, currently used um, regarding CPU memory, so it seems like uh, everything is working fine here from CC point of view. Of course, uh, one thing that you are probably uh, you will not see here it is like uh, the metrics that are displayed. I don't have any chance here to move or adapt this uh, time frame. So uh, that means if I started just right now, it is from by now until one hour before so that means you will see always here last hour but not earlier not in this way um let's move now to the uh go back to the ecs that we have already deployed only just to be sure that everything is working we see that uh, we can then access this uh, ecs oh no it's just uh starting so let's wait a little bit i think it will take some time Ah, it is not this, sorry, that because we were deployed this ECS here on this. So that means I just accessed the wrong one. Sorry for that. So let's see. And this is the one that we really just deployed. I just wonder because it takes really not too much time to get one ECS starting. So we will just pick up the IP address there, copy it somewhere, and then we have here a console. In this console, we can uh, uh, we will access this. So I'm here. So one of these is that I need to be uh, root access. And then the second thing it is that I have to execute one curl command based on that. Where I can find this uh, core before I start uh, just executing the code. Um, just keep in mind when we uh, were an AOM, in every AOM that we will move, you may have also the option to um, see exactly how is the procedure to install this. I show you in one screenshot how to do it. Here's this place, agent management. So the last one of this. And when you move to this agent management, then you have first to, this, to say that uh, user defined node. So that means this is, doesn't belong to CCE, all other are cluster on CCE, but if you choose this option, then you may see this. And then when you set install agent, then you will get automatically exactly on the, on the right side, uh, all the screenshots that showed you before. This is exactly the way you have to execute it. Of course, it is uh, um, expected that you already have the access key and secret key. So in this case, as uh, so we are there, so I have exactly the same command, only just that I have the access key and secret key as a variable um, saved on this environment. So you will not uh, see that, but most important thing anytime is that you set the right project ID here. Um, this project ID, it means that will be the AOM deployed on that uh, project that we will forward all the metrics from this server there. So I executed also this command. We will see that everything will be start installing. After that, then it has been the, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, deployed. So the next stop uh, will be exactly to just to figure out uh, if everything, uh, if the service is running, of course it is expected that it's running. So when we execute this, we will see that it's still running. Um, since uh, the AOM, it is uh, in the overview, will show um, on this uh, top five, which one it is use the CPU usage from all of them, then we can start only just to uh, get our um, ECS on the top if we increase the memory of that. So to do that, I mean to increase the memory only just to overload the um, the CPU and see what happens if the server will be exactly overloaded. Then we can, for example, start the script. The script is uh, very already known. With this script, we will just start increasing 
the load of the CPUs to 100%. So we already are overloading this only just to see uh, how, uh, where we will get displayed here on our IOM, this ECS. Um, after I run this script, the first thing that you can do only just to see that everything is working is to move to the agent management. You just select the as a cluster and then you we do a refresh, of course. I there's here ECS AOM demo. That is the right one that we create just right now. If you see exactly the time that has been uh, there created, it's exactly right now, so two minutes ago. And then after we execute this command, then you know this ECS is already um install or an, 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 an interconnected to AOM and then they start getting measured. One thing that you have to know, of course, when you run this, it is not expected that we will get all the information displayed here. It will be uh, take by about six minutes until you see the metrics or, or you get displayed at your ECS here. So um, six to seven minutes, uh, you have to wait only just to see what uh, really happens so that the server is here and we will see that server will be then positioned here with CPU usage over 100%. But I think in, in this case, we uh, will uh, just uh, continue with uh, some of these um, properties, features that AOM can display it only just uh, during this uh, six minutes pass. And after all, we will come back and then let's say uh, we will uh, see the server here on the top of this. Uh, for that, I told you also what the uh, part of this AOM, it's not just uh, the, the installation, it's also to see uh, what can we do here. So we have here a alarm center with this alarm center, as you see, it is uh, actually empty. For last one hour, you can also set for a last, uh, 15 days and so on, and you can see exactly what really happened uh, about this. Um, you will see here, fail to uninstall the IC agent. I will tell you later on what does this mean and why we get this, uh, what is the, the um, connection with this uh, message, because it will be really, really important for you to understand why you will get this. Um, nevertheless, of course, these alarms uh, that are critical, major, binary warning, it is not like it's decided by IOM. The place that you have created will be by creating threshold rules. And in these threshold rules, you can set exactly uh, how do you want to, to, to get this working. In this case, for example, uh, for CPU usage or uh, you have uh, data and so on. So it is exactly the way it will be work. This CPU exits if you just uh, scroll uh, up. I mean, you open this uh, with the pop-up, then you will know exactly uh, how uh, this is uh, still supposed to work. Here, it's a little uh, bit uh, not really clear because uh, you don't see any uh, name of the servers that you have. You have only just the ID of the host, uh, describe it, and the IP address. This will be implied that uh, there, there is exist a server with this IP address that is still getting monitoring with CPU usage. This will be the server that, that I am uh, I used before, just before communication to this one. So you remember that I opened a window here and I was already logged in in one uh, server. So it was it will be the IP address of this server that I start using for the connection. So in this case, for that, I didn't increase the memory, so everything seems uh, okay. And I have created exactly this alarm in this way that it uh, should be set with alarm severity major. I can only, uh, um, if we, I want to modify this. It's a little bit uh, uh, really uh, tricky because after you create an alarm, it will be later on difficult to change, for example, the name. If you decide once the name that you have set there, it will stay forever. So it is, uh, a uh, hint from my side will be that uh, when you decide a name from a threshold rule, uh, please think about uh, the uh, uh, name that makes sense for you and you will not change after all, because uh, after all, you have to create a new one. Otherwise, it, uh, you have to delete this. So there is no chance. The only one thing that you can uh, change on this alarm will be exactly the threshold condition. So in this case, it is like after 90%, if it's higher than this, then I will get an alarm. You can change the severity that you have there. So I set it with measures. If you can change it, you will be able to do it. And of course, uh, the notification, if uh, you want to send uh, a notification in this way, I create a topic with this. It's an email address and I will get. And the options that you have, it is uh, this three that the three should cross into normal and insufficient data. So you also can do this change at the alarm level. 
Um, nevertheless, uh, what does this mean? Events, because I just jump out from alarms to events. Uh, this event is uh, not more that when you create a, a cluster that there is a threshold CPU exists, this all just set like an event. And even is uh, no more that it's something uh, it's uh, happening on your cluster, like it's deleted, you see it, or uh, deletes as, as, uh, of uh, BPC nodes, security groups, it succeeds. So everything that happens on your CCE on, on your host that you have created will be also here delivered in this way. Um, uh, now let's see, for example, in the view management, so we have term view management is more over a focus on dashboards. So dashboards is more the sense of uh, how I want to monitor uh, whatever I want to get monitoring with CCE in this case, uh, in CCE or ECS. In this case, I decided to create a monitoring solution for the production um, environment that I showed you before on CCE. I have two environments. One is production. The other one is development. I have there some uh, bots, and then I can see during the time how they will be just uh, uh, working. So in this case, they are now stable. So they are just uh, have uh, 22. For example, if you see 22 um, um, Kubernetes uh, containers. Uh, from MongoDB and then the 12 for Tomcat Nginx, 12 for them and for uh, uh, WordPress only just eight. On the same uh, time, you can also set for development. It's just seeing that uh, later on, it is not uh, you don't want to set one of them. You just move to operations, modify, and then the one that you don't want to have, you just select it, you just uh, delete it, say OK, and after that, then you have only used these three of them. The same way, uh, if you want to extend uh, this, uh, so we delete the WordPress, so you can say modify. And then in this case, it was from the production, so I will move to production. In production, I have to go to uh, the uh, default namespace because there was the place that I was delivered. If I move to WordPress, we will see that from WordPress, there's all each uh, Docker container is listed there, but I want to get from all of them the metrics, so I will set the CPU usage, this is it, and then I will have again the same thing. Uh, most important, of course, after doing some kind of change, you should set safe, and then after all, then this change will be still remain there. As I told you before, uh, CC has uh, just uh, from the last day, uh, the monitoring, so you have here a broad use possibility, just you start monitoring your containers all the time, and you will get a response of uh, how it is the, this uh, deployment is uh, the behavior of your uh, containers because in the containers it's your application that's the value that you want to get focused and that is the reason you can also extend on the uh, past uh, about the information that you want to get the, uh, delivered there. I think uh, we already passed the six minutes hour from the uh, ECS. Let's just uh, go back and then we can continue with the other uh, stuff. So let's see uh, what happens. Um, Uh, with our uh, server, so let's see. We will move to the ECS. Ah, I am um, sorry for that. We want to see first on AUM. AUM. So, and then now let's wait for the overview. I just have to only use to uh, click the right one. Sorry for to um, distract you uh, to move into the other one, but let's see. So it seems that the response time in my computer is really slow. But what we're supposed to expect is uh, to see all uh, these uh, metrics. You see, it is just taking some time only just to get all of this. So now, um, as I told you before, uh, the easy is that we start overloading with the um, CPU usage, then we will see it is here listed. CPU usage is 100%, so we know it is exactly uh, true. 
that doesn't uh, that is exactly what we want to to see when uh, we want to see uh, for example at the logs level uh, then we have here let's um, go from uh, the top to the bottom host monitoring i think you already know what does this mean the host monitoring is everything that you have installed the uh, ic agent so in this case as you will see there is a mix of them because this this uh, here belongs to cce you can see there uh, uh, that they have some uh, kind also of structure of ECC and these two servers are the two one that I installed the EC agent and they also they uh, be part of also of this host monitoring. In this case, uh, you will get displayed of course all this uh, information that it is uh, just required. Um, most important thing that it is very uh, interesting for most of the customer they already ask about how about the disk usage because I cannot monitor the disk usage on CES in this case from AOM you will get exactly this disk usage that you have already done on on AOM that would be also a very good, pretty good value. Or from the work a uh, lot of monitoring it's more focused on cce so i think this is uh, not just uh, new for you so you will see that also the ic agent is also installed on there on on the uh, the work loss monitoring on cce and that is the reason to get all this information here from the service monitoring again it is uh, more over uh, regarding cce so it is uh, just to see uh, what is uh, really uh, happening at the service level so you get also um, displayed all these metrics and after all uh, this um, monitoring of metrics then there is a um, another part that is focused only just for uh, log management in this log management there are only just uh, these a few options um, it is uh, the what's defined for uh, log files in the log files you will see that the log files are more for explicitly and uh, just all the log files that um, IOM has uh, now um, saved forward from uh, CCE as well as from all the ECS. And then you can only uh, get an overview of how, which files do you will get this. So um, uh, moreover, uh, when we start to figure out about these um, uh, files, let's see, for example, um, we have here customer clusters. We have here a bug. Of course, it will be fixed in the next because you get, uh, you will get here all the deployments that you have done in the past. I'm sorry for that. We are working very hard to get this uh, solved. And uh, nevertheless, um, by now it seems like uh, all the deployments that you have done, you will get all the access to them. But it is uh, now the intention only is to get the ones that you have now running. In this case, as I showed you before on the production, we have uh, these four uh, deployments, WordPress, Tomcat, and Jinx, and MongoDB. And based on that, on each deployment, for example, for MongoDB, for uh, each of uh, these containers, I will have uh, access to the standard outlook. And I can uh, then see uh, then the information that has been presented. Of course, uh, this information is just only used uh, from this uh, time frame. If you want to adapt it and to just decide from which time to the which time you want to get this, then you can also move and uh, and then access exactly the logs to the right uh, date that you want to look forwards. Um, uh, from the uh, post. It is uh, from the host, uh, you will see that it is empty. So don't worry, it is just uh, 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 that it is not your service there. You will get uh, then for your ACS servers here. And in the ACS service here, then will be um, localized in these systems and in these systems. So you can set exactly the IP address of your server that you want to get listed the information. I think uh, it was not this one. Let me change uh, which IP address to we use for the server so let's just pick a little bit what is the ip address of the new server that we create and then we can exactly see the logs from that server right now so this is the server that we create and do using this demo then we access it then we will set the ip address here and then we will see the logs only just focus from that server so it seems like uh, uh, it is uh, really is a, a straightforward uh, way only just uh, to access the log search. 
the only one uh, things that we want to touch uh, as, as next it will be the pet configuration the pet configuration as you will see here you have a mixed list of everything that has been deleted in the past and also you have created or running right now if you want to see only use um, uh, the nodes uh, that are normal, so they are not deleted, then we have just currently two nodes, and in this one, we will see the configuration of the pet. The pet of the ECS level just will be cover this. If we create an application, for example, like Tomcat as next, then it we will have, uh, we will want also to get this included on this log pet, and then we will see the way how we integrate this, so in this part. Let's do this, so um, we will then access uh that server what that we already did so it is our own demo uh since uh, we start to do the uh the cpu usage to 100 percent let's just stop uh, that because we don't need it anymore so if we do this then we have now the cpu now without 100 percent running and then let's start to install this uh, tomcat application that we uh, and should be then Deliver. So by doing this, I just uh, want to uh, um, execute all the uh, stuff that has to be needed only just to deploy the Tomcat. It is already uh, being there. I think uh, this is not necessary to talk about this because there are too, uh, too many uh, blocks about how to do this. And nevertheless, the most important thing after we do exactly the right things to, the, to deploy Tomcat in this way, then we just then start the service and then let's uh, adapt, uh, attach this uh, um, uh, this path to the IOM. So what we do have it is so the way that we create over things. So to be sure that Tomcat is running, then we will see that the Tomcat is now running, and then. Uh, to be uh, to make this uh, more funny, then we will also deploy an example application that it's also very new for most of you from Tomcat server. So now we have a Tomcat there running. If we do curl and then local host, I think it will be 8080 for Tomcat, and we will uh, uh, local. I'm sorry for that. Joker, it's not exactly the right. So we are now then Tomcat there still there so let's uh, see what are the uh, where is the place for the tomcat logs in this case uh, they will be located exactly here so and then we will have the logs there so you may see it is clearly it is the date of the day the time of course it is uh, not the, the uh, real time um, so but nevertheless we have it here so after we create this, then we can then add, add this pet to our AOM, and then we will get also add to this ECS, this application that it is really needed. Um, here, okay, add configuration, then we select exactly the right one, configure, then enter the log pet, so we have this. You can have uh, this in this way, or you can set also this asterisk uh, twice only just to get this recursive. So there's some kind of hints here. You can use also until uh, recursive. I think it is uh, like uh, five um, extensions on the uh, dip five level directory, and then, then you can have it. So let's say it is there, and then it's already configured, and this is it. So we already have uh, now, and in and ECS that has to install the agent and it uh, will be part the Tomcat also of this pet configuration. And the log buckets, it is another thing that you have to note in the log buckets, then uh, we already, I already created a bucket and this bucket, all the logs will be stored, but only used for the ECS that uh, I create. So in this case, I will have this. And if I move to this, then we will see that I, um, I have created an Apache Tomcat server, I just deployed. You will see also the time. This is the server that we have. This is started Apache, so the logs are already synced to uh, to AOM, and then you will see we have all the information to them. To this, this is uh, not uh, the logs from Apache. Uh, just to be clear, this is the uh, logs for the um, default uh, message system from from the server. Nevertheless, 
it's still all this information there uh, visible for you and you have always monitored about the time it was deployed and the message that has been happened. If I, for example, I use uh, exit, of course, of the server and just uh, leave the session, uh, then it will be also uh, be a protocol here. So in this case, so we use to our reload, then we will see um, session logout, session closet for user Linux, and then all the information that has should be exactly passed uh, just right now. Session closed by user root, we did it just right now. The time is happens there, so everything is there. Um, I think uh, uh, let's uh, then the install uh, the agent because we are moving now to the uh, closely to the end of the demo. So uh, when we have deployed the agents, we have also to figure out how to uninstall the agent. So on the only one thing that you have to do is just execute the command. It will be exactly this one. And after I execute this command as a root user, then I will uninstall the agent. And after that, then the metrics will be not then sent to AOM. Um, I think uh, most of the parts I have uh, present to you in this uh, demo, most focus of this uh, uh, demonstration at this time, it was uh, more focused about the IC agent because there were a lot of questions about IC agent. What is this good for? Uh, what can I uh, do for this IC agent and so on? So that will be exactly um, to uh, show you. Uh, it is easy to install. It is straightforward, so it doesn't take too much time only just to get this installed. Most of the parts or difficulties that you will have to this uh, agent will be if uh, the connections to SSH or to download exactly the uh, package, but when you have all this uh, fixed, then the installation will be really straightforward, no problems, no issues. So you see it is uh, a very nice solution at all. With the alarm center, uh, as I told you, um, the three rituals, it is uh, like I have created here right now. You can create uh, one ritual here. So for the three rituals, uh, you can decide how, uh, at what kind of level do you want to create one. Do you have a VM, host, disk, network, GPU, and so on. Uh, but uh, host, it will be a mean ECS, of course. So there are only use these options and then selected, depending which one do you select, it is what will be then shown here. If I want to do it at the uh, container uh, level, then I will not get this uh, last part for the host because host it is it it is it means CCE and the ECS level. So if I want to monitor one host, I can do it in this way, and then this is it. So I, how I can continue? Of course, I have to set here a name, for example, and when I set the name, then I have uh, here many options how to get this monitor, so I can decide what I will have to do. And for example, if I set a CPU, I can see how the CPU uh, behaves in the past. You see also 100% from that because uh, at the time the IC agent has been installed, from that time the history will be also shown here. So that is the reason that we see also the past and now the present right now. So you can decide exactly based on that information, uh, which kind of parameters do you want to show, which kind of celebrity you want to use, if you want to get a, a, a notification and so on. So that means it is uh, really straightforward. Uh, this, uh, to get effect at this uh, threshold, it will be take some time. So that means uh, when you al already has set everything correctly, from my experience, by the first time that you have set it, it will be take uh, by about three minutes. And after that, then you will get all uh, this information displayed correctly. Because after all, you will see the status could be uh, um, uh, okay, insufficient, or uh, there is uh, something that ex exceed. There are only just three kind of status. And then based on that, you can see if you have to react or to something in this case. Um, last uh, but uh, not uh, least before uh, we then uh, let's show you how I get uninstall the agent because we want to see that it's not just that I show you and this is it. The command I already uninstall the agent and it will be take five minutes until AOM then uh, understand that they will not get the metrics from this agent and then you can delete the ECS from the agent management uh, console here by then user defined nodes in this case this one so in this case it seems like it's running 
what actually it is and not because we already stop everything as i told you it will do a few minutes and after that then it will be show us uh, uh, as not uh, there and then you can delete it um by the way uh, now uh, let's uh, move about the uh, part of the limitations because you are we're close to this part of the limitations um this aom solution by now it's only just uh, working we found out that uh, we have an issue and this will be that it is only just working by now for uh, cce version what 1.19 um what does this mean for you so or what is the difference so if we now are in this tenant in this tenant i have created a deployed a cce two of them two clusters and when i have these two clusters there, as you see, uh, there are version 1.19, so bot. So that is the reason when I set here monitoring, I will get also the information from workloads and bot monitoring. But if we, for example, move to um, uh, to another version, so let's move to a version, the, la the latest that we have, it is version 1.21, by doing exactly the same stuff, then we will see that there is no data there on CCE. So that means by uh, version 1.21, the metrics will be automatically forward to AOM. And that is the reason we have now a compatibility issue. As uh, you know, we already in the community, for example, on the landing page, it, there is also warning. So it is uh, already known here, compatibility issue between AOM and CCE version. So it's already there. Um, uh, at least um, officially a statement there we are fixing this in the uh, next uh, weeks hopefully then we will have uh, this uh, working and this will be uh, the way it's supposed to work so by now what is uh, what will be also not working in uh, this uh, version cce uh, 1.21 i mean I, it's not my service but you uh, have to know uh, i am also aware that uh, something has to be happened so when you go there and move to just to monitoring, you will be also not data available for that. So um, be a little bit careful if you want to use a CCE with AOM right now, because uh, this seems for me that it is a really uh, a big thing. You know, it is not like uh, monitoring. If you get running something and you don't get any values there, it's not exactly very funny. And the other thing that we, uh, if we are here, for example, and we move to the AOM regarding all these deployments in this uh, in this tenant, so we will move to AOM so that I can show you exactly what will be also the problem. So you will see that uh, the, at the, for example, at the nodes level, everything seems to be displayed, but at the service instance and so on, there are not nothing else. Uh, uh, can be displayed now in AOM. And that's exactly what I want to show you. I know uh, that is uh, pretty uh, sad and, and, and not very funny but right now. As I told you before, we are working on it, but you have to know it is uh, really no issue. Sorry for that. We are working on this and let's see forward on this. Um, to go back to, uh, to uh, when we start after the demo, we have the Q&A. I'm probably sure uh, there are some questions from your side, so I will start with some of them. So probably you, this could be solved your questions. So how many OEMs do I have? So um, if you have a tenant of the OTC, it is always like a, you, you always believe you have one AOM, but that's not true. If uh, you go to my credentials, you will see that you have a list of projects there. So with project ID, as I we start the execution of the command, I have set one of this project ID to get this. So that means in every of these projects, you will have a dedicated AOM for that instance. Um, so those AMOS works only for Linux. Yes, it is only just for Linux. There is no plans to work for Windows, at least by now. If you don't have customers that are interested for Windows, just let me know and uh, we uh, try to figure out if we can get this happen. Uh, when uh, you uh, have uh, installed AOM on an ECS, probably you are now thinking, is it possible that I can send these metrics to all other AOMs on different projects? No, the, uh, the answer is clear, no. When you execute this command, AOM can just uh, send this to one uh, project. So uh, I mean, I mean the, the connection between uh, ECS and AOM is one ECS to just only one AOM to send the metrics. 
So, and, and now I show you, of course, that CCE will be not show the metrics anymore on the, uh, up to version 1.21. 1 .1, uh, 1 so that means in this case, uh, yeah, uh, it seems like uh, now the metrics that will be displayed on CCE will be then forward to AOM. And that is the reason that then uh, we will uh, then uh, have uh, the metrics after 1.21 and in this version only use in AOM. Thank you so much uh, from billing. Yes, it was a part of billing that I am just uh, missing. Sorry. Um, in billing, uh, we are now working on that. Uh, of course, the metrics that should be displayed, it is uh, should be not be uh, charged because you know it is just metrics and monitoring are one of the things that uh, every cloud has to provide. Uh, but uh, we are now more focused when you create a new uh, a new dashboard, for example, and in this dashboard you set some metrics there. Then uh, probably that will be exactly the way we want to move uh, with the billing. And of course, we have to estimate that this uh, kind of shares will be not that much because if you use on AOM storage, like for buckets, then you already have to pay for the storage. If you use SMN, SMN for uh, notifications, and then in this case, uh, up to a certain level of notification, then you have to pay. So it is already a part of all other services interconnected with AOM. So the value could be in this case for AOM, the dashboard. When you create a dashboard with specific metrics, probably this dashboard should be paid, but most of the other things should be really available for free. And our final decision to this, it will be start uh, next month, so in June. But as I told you before, it is not expected that this AOM service has to really be very expensive that nobody wants to use because it's too expensive. Now I would like, uh, since I'm done, I would like to hear from you some questions if you have. Please. Yeah, Hector, we already have two questions in the chat. I will read them out to you. So the first one from Marcus is, does ICA agent need special firewall, firewall opening or VPC interconnection? Uh, no, no, because uh, it will be used exactly an IP address that is in the intra net of in the uh, network inside of uh, the tenant that uh, it is already uh, be there set to be um, uh, accessible. So the answer is uh, you, no, there is not need of this. Okay, thank you. And question number two in the chat is from Uwe. He is asking, I missed the beginning of the demo. My question is, does the IC agent needs to be installed on CCE nodes as well as you showed with the ECS? And yeah, that's a good question. Hey, yes. Ah, thank you for that question. No, the, uh, when you deployed uh, CCE, the IC agent will be automatically installed. Let me show uh, this so that, that you uh, have uh, then uh, create a cluster. If you get, uh, create a cluster here and create one of them, uh, when you set all this data there correctly, for example, then you will get also a disclaimer that uh, this uh, will be exactly uh, um, just a second, just to get the, the disclaimer there. So here it is the disclaimer for the IC agent. And in this case, you may see that the agent will be installed by default. So you don't need to do, to do anything else. The other thing is when we start moving AOM with billing and you don't want to use AOM, whatever reason you have, it is also uh, really acceptable because uh, you, no one has to be forced to uh, install uh, or the agent. Then if you move to your AOM solution, in this case, this one, and get agent management, you can also uninstall the agent from, uh, from every of these uh, environments that you have. So after it has been installed, for example, and if I set this one, this is production, I say uninstall the IC agent, I say yes, then the agent will be then at this time uninstalled, and that means the metrics will be not forward to AOM anymore. Okay, thank you for this information, Hector. I think there we have a special situation when you do not uh, create your stuff via the UI console here, when you create it via Terraform, then this IC agent will not be um, will not be directly created on your CCE cluster, then you need to do this manually. Correct, Hector? That's, yes, that's correct. So uh, if you are using Terraform and uh, deployed uh, CCE, the agent will be not by default installed. 
that is uh, the good news. If you, if you see like this, if you don't want it, then after all, then you have to uh, come here to agent management and then to select the um, uh, your environment here in this case, and then you set install agent, and then at that point it will be installed. Okay, great. We have one more question for Markus. It's can I see agents start custom script to perform checks and error level of script is interpreted as okay, warning and error? No, right now it is not possible. Okay, thank you for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think no more questions open. So with this, I would say thank you a lot for joining today's webinar. It was a really great finish of this week. Wish you all a nice weekend and see you hopefully in the next webinar by the community again. And yeah, wish you a nice weekend and see you all. Bye and thank you Hector for having you here. Thank you so much.